There's hardly anything more uncomfortable than watching an eyeball, and beware, this is not for the squeamish, get poked, suctioned, sliced, zapped with a laser, and then sponged off. And yet each year, millions of Americans pay for this treatment in the form of laser eye surgery. Today we're going to Bethlehem, Pennsylvania to watch a LASIK eye surgery performed. Our guide is Dr. Stephen Vale of Acuity Laser Eye and Vision Center. I'm a cornea specialist and ophthalmologist and I perform refractive surgery, primarily laser vision correction, LASIK and PRK. LASIK and PRK treat lower order aberrations which people, lay people know as nearsightedness or farsightedness and astigmatism. The eye's job is to focus light on the retina, but when you're nearsighted or farsighted, your eyes aren't doing their jobs. They're focusing light in front or behind the retina. By doing laser vision correction, you do what glasses and contacts do. You change where the light focuses. By zapping the cornea with a laser, you can change the position of that focal point. You can think of light like a pack of runners and the cornea or the lens like a mud patch. The runners start from the same place and move in lockstep until they hit mud and they're slowed down. Because of the shape of the mud patch, some runners are slowed down more than others and they get out of sync. The same thing happens when light goes through a lens. It slows down. The difference in the eye is that you can only see an object when the light gets back in sync. But to get the photons back in sync or the runners in lockstep, the runners who are ahead have to travel farther than the runners that are behind. In other words, the runners that went through less mud have to travel a longer distance than the runners that went through more mud to let them catch up. And this only happens where the runners converge. Now LASIK works on the same principle. By changing the shape of the cornea or the mud patch, you change the position of the convergence point. But before we can go zapping corneas, Dr. Vale has to prepare the patient. Hi, it's Dr. Vale again. We're here in the operating room with our patient Dan. Dan's already been pre-medicated and should be pretty relaxed, but if he's not, We'll deal with it. Patients are not put to sleep for LASIK surgery. We need them to fixate on the fixation light so that the laser can fire. And we do have a tracking system for the laser, but if the eyes couldn't look up at the laser, there's only so far the laser would track. So there's uh, numbing medication topically placed in the eye a couple of times. And we uh, put sterile drapes on the eye to keep our field clean and uh, then place the speculum to hold the eye open. After the speculum, Dr. Vale marks the eye, which helps him locate the astigmatic axis in patients having an astigmatism corrected. The marker also helps Dr. Vale realign the flap that he's about to cut. A LASIK flap is a piece of stromal tissue that we actually we cut from the cornea, but leave attached by a small hinge. So you, you do the treatment inside and then put this piece of tissue back over. To cut the flap, Dr. Vale has to secure the eye with a suction ring. Once Kathy activates the vacuum, the ring holds the eye and firms it up. <clears throat> and then a second instrument called a microkeratome comes across the eye and cuts a, a thin layer of, like, like the thickness of a contact lens. No squeeze. So really what you're doing is you're doing two procedures, one cutting a flap and the other one performing ablation of tissue with a laser. Some lasers are thermal where they actually create a, a sizzling or burning effect. Other lasers are disruptive where they actually um, like create like a shock wave. Um, this laser actually ablates the molecules, it takes the molecules and breaks them apart into carbon dioxide and water. Dan the patient is nearsighted, which means he either has too long an eye a lens that has too much focusing power, or a cornea that's too steep. Any of those things may, may make someone nearsighted. But no matter why you're nearsighted... We treat them the same way, we flatten the cornea. The laser applies pulses directly to the, to the cornea, and thereby flattening it. And this is what that looks like. And here it is in slow-mo. In, in a far-sighted treatment, we actually do the opposite. We actually create an annulus. Which is a ring. That causes the eye to bow out slightly and increase the steepness of the cornea. So we actually make the cornea steeper. Which makes the focal length shorter. Okay, very good. You're a great patient, Dan. Mm. After ablating, Dr. Vale folds the flap down. 
Then we use a, a sponge again to smooth the flap out and put it back where it belongs. That piece of tissue is actually a natural bandage. Now, Dan, would you have been able to see that clock without your glasses before we mm, did your treatment? No. I mean, it's, it is like I'm underwater, though. Exactly. But, well, yeah, that's I wouldn't be able to that's see normal. It. The effect you get is really pretty much immediate. Um, there's a little bit, because there's swelling, that people think that they, they, they've been in the swimming pool too long afterwards, but uh, generally it's really gratifying to the patients in particular know that they made the right choice because as soon as they get off the chair, they can see better already. So. I'm Flora Lichtman for Science Friday.